Hello, my name's Jessica Walsh and I'm the first author on this new paper published in Brain. In this video, I'm going to present a short abstract on behalf of my co-authors on our new paper titled Microglia Activation and Blood-Brain Barrier Permeability in Cerebral Small Vessel Disease. Cerebral small vessel disease is characterized by lacuna infarcts and white matter hyperintensities that are visible on MRI. It causes a quarter of all strokes, is the most common cause of vascular dementia, and is also involved in age-related cognitive decline to a lesser degree. However, despite the high prevalence, there are currently no disease-modifying treatments available, and all treatments focus on targeting the risk factors, such as antihypertensives. And the reason behind this is really that the underlying pathogenesis is still quite unclear. And if we could further our knowledge of this pathogenesis, then this would open up new avenues for treatments. In this study, we wanted to explore a possible cascade of damage that was put forward by Rosenberg et al. as a result of their animal studies. In this cascade, we have an initial chronic hypoperfusion of the small vessels. This then leads to hypoxia and a production of HIF-1-alpha. This then triggers an inflammatory response and a production of matrix metalloproteases, which break down the tight junctions of the blood-brain barrier and lead to a leakage of various components of the blood into the surrounding brain parenchyma to cause damage. Our study involved three groups of participants. We had a control group, a sporadic small vessel disease group, and a cadicel group, which is a genetic form of cerebral small vessel disease. Our design was case control, so we compared our sporadic small vessel disease with our control group and our cadicel group with our control group. And our imaging protocol was as follows. We had a PET scan, which was 80 minutes long, which involved an injection of the tracer P1, PK11195 to look for microglia activation. We also simultaneously ran 65 minutes of MRI scans involving the conventional structural MRI scans and DTI. And at 25 minutes to go, we had an injection of gadolinium for a specific blood-brain barrier permeability scan. Here are the results of the blood-brain barrier permeability analysis. We found that there was an increase in the mean blood-brain barrier permeability in our sporadic small vessel disease group, shown here in green, compared to control in both the normal appearing white matter and the white matter lesion. However, we found no significant difference between our cadicel group and control. We then looked at the blood-brain barrier permeability hotspots, which were defined as the 95th centile of blood-brain barrier permeability from the control group. We took this value from the control group and thresholded it across all three of the groups to calculate these blood-brain barrier permeability hotspots. And we then took their volume. We found that the volume of the blood-brain barrier permeability hotspots in sporadic small vessel disease was significantly higher than in the control group in both the normal appearing white matter and the white matter lesion. However, once again, we found no significant difference between our cadicil and control group. We then explored the PK11195 binding, which is a surrogate for microglia activation. When we took the mean values, we found no significant difference in the values across any of the groups. However, when we applied the same um, hotspot analysis, taking the 95th centile of the control group and thresholding this value across the three groups, we found that there was a significant increase in the volume of the PK11195 binding hotspots in sporadic small vessel disease group compared to control. We also found there was a trend for these values to be higher in our cadicil group compared to control, although this was not significant. When we looked in the white matter lesion, we found that there was once again a significant increase in the volume of these hotspots in sporadic small vessel disease compared to control and in cadicil compared to control. We were then interested in the spatial location of the blood-brain barrier permeability and microglia activation hotspots. We therefore performed a spatial overlap analysis. Interestingly, we found that there was significantly less overlap than expected by chance in the normal appearing white matter of the sporadic small vessel disease group and cadicil groups, suggesting these processes are spatially distinct. Therefore, to conclude, in our sporadic small vessel disease group, we found increased blood-brain barrier permeability and microglia activation seem to occur, but these processes are spatially distinct from one another. However, in cadicil, the picture is less clear. We found no evidence of blood-brain barrier involvement. And we did find some evidence of microglia activation. However, this would need to be explored further. Thank you very much for listening.